Have you ever dropped a LUT on your footage and suddenly it looks like it belongs in a radioactive fruit bowl? Well, here's the thing. LUTs aren't broken. They're just not designed to magically work on every clip that you put into it. So today I'll show you the quick way to fix it by adding a corrector node and adjusting the intensity of your LUT in DaVinci Resolve. G'day friends. If you just clicked on this video and you aren't sure what a LUT actually is, it stands for lookup table. And it is more complicated than this, but it's like a completely adjustable Instagram filter for your video. Back when I started my editing journey, I used to think that LUTs were plug and play, but they're not. My footage always looked like someone cranked the saturation up to clown mode. And after too much Googling and trial and error, I found the solution. And it's honestly easier than most tutorials make it. Now, before we get into this, please keep in mind that this is a beginner tutorial. There are much more complicated ways to do this. I just wanted to give you a starting point. Okay, here we go. Let's jump into DaVinci Resolve. Once you've loaded your footage into the timeline, go to the color tab and then on the upper right of the screen window, right click in the node editor and choose add node, correct a node. Then left click and hold and drag it up until the yellow lines connect. That means that it's connected to your actual footage. And I know nodes can look scary, but what they really are are like layers in Photoshop. So your footage here has a node on top of it that you can change and tweak colors on without affecting your original footage. Then when you add another node, it works on top of the last one and so on. So you can do a lot of basic tweaking before you add the LUTs. And this is where you can fix exposure and white balance or contrast before the LUT does a thing. Think of it as prepping your clip. So for instance, if your footage is too dark or too warm, the LUT will only exaggerate it. So fix it here first. So the goal here is to basically get your footage to an even starting point. And a quick thing to understand before we add the LUT is not all footage starts in the same place. If you're shooting in log formats like Canon C-Log or D-Log options, which you find in most drones, the footage will look flat and gray at first, but that's by design. If you're working with footage that's already been color corrected, like straight out of the camera, for instance, then the colors will already look contrasty and vibrant. If you slap a LUT on that, it can easily push it too far. It gets oversaturated, over contrasty, almost cartoonish. Now log footage captures way more dynamic range, meaning more detail in the shadows and highlights. But the trade-off is that it needs color correction before you throw a LUT on it. Although some LUTs work well with log footage as it is, like this one from my LUTs pack, which is the LUT inspired by the movie 1917. And because it's a desaturated look, it sort of works with it. And the LUTs we're working with today are from my 51 movie LUTs super pack, which have the looks of all your favorite movies. But if you haven't picked up my LUTs pack yet, I've got a few 100% free LUTs for you that you can try in my cinematic starter kit. You get a whole bunch of resources as well, has a few Lightroom presets and the LUTs the links are in the description to the cinematic starter kit and the LUTs pack if you want to check it out for yourself. But getting back to the video, that's why the corrector node is so important. With log footage, you use the corrector node to bring the clip to a neutral, balanced look before the LUT. And with already corrected footage, you use it to dial the things back so the LUT doesn't cook your colors. Basically, log footage is like raw dough. You've got to bake it before adding toppings. And already corrected footage is like a pizza that's already loaded with cheese. Suddenly, I'm feeling hungry. All right, so now we've got a corrector node in place and we've corrected it to suit your liking. We need to add another node and this is the node we apply the LUT to. So we create another node like this, right click, select node, correct a node, and then drag it up until the yellow lines connect like before. Now we go over to our LUTs folder, which is here. DaVinci has a bunch of LUTs already inbuilt, but we're gonna grab one from my LUTs pack and we drag it over to your footage like this. Now let's control the LUT itself. Click on the node that you put the LUT on Go to the key menu, you'll see a slider called key output gain. And then by dragging this slider to the left lowers the LUTs intensity, dragging it to the right increases it. And this is where LUTs finally become usable. First, I'll apply the LUTs to the already corrected footage. I'm going to use the matrix green LUT here for this one. And I'm just going to slide the slider down until it looks how I want it to look. And as you can see, it's completely different to when I started. And if you look at them side by side, you can see that at full strength, it looks like I'm in a glow stick factory. But as you dial it back, it's much closer to what you want. And that's the trick. And now I'll apply some LUT to some log footage. And this one is going to be the Joker LUT, which is based on the movie, The Joker. And this is what the LUT looks like before I actually color corrected it, then after I color corrected it, and then after I applied the LUT. But remember how I corrected the log footage first, otherwise the LUT just crushes everything. It's the same deal with drone footage. This D-Log clip looks flat at first, but with the correction node, plus a LUT applied to another node, and then you play with the strength a little bit, you get that something that's more cinematic. Obviously, this is very basic color correction. This can easily get way more complicated, but this is just a starting point for you if you haven't done this before. So if your LUTs have ever made your footage look like a nuclear blast of color, and now you know how to fix it, correct a node first, adjust intensity second, and some tweaks and you're golden. As I mentioned before, the examples I used in this video are from my 51 Movie LUTs Super Pack. If you've already got them, then this video is your reference guide to using them properly. And if you don't, you can try out a couple of them from my cinematic starter kit. 
And I know for some of you that all this in DaVinci Resolve may feel a little bit confusing, but don't worry because this video right here will show you so much tips and tricks for DaVinci Resolve, and it's two hours long because it's packed with editing goodness.